We can actually envision um, lots of different ways in which mapping modern theology could be used in the classroom. Uh, obviously, the, the most immediate use we can imagine is people teaching courses on modern theology and contemporary theology because there is a great need for students in those fields to, to not just know the history but to see ideas as as they get traced out and to, to start to put them together um, and we you can use it as a text in which either you start to structure a course on modern theology or contemporary theology around themes or, as is often done, if you do teach the course historically, uh, one of the things I've found with my classes is if you end with a, a chunk of the course discussing the themes, uh, a textbook like this then allows your students who have been introduced to Schleiermacher and Ritchell and Bart and, and Niebuhr and etc. Now you can have a pretty nuanced conversation about the so what. How, how does this work out in the various theological loci? And, and so we're hopeful about that. But you also find that in courses on systematic theology or courses that are overviews of doctrine, those courses are so important, but so often students, as they're taking through key doctrines, really don't often learn about the debates post the Reformation or post Enlightenment world. And we can imagine that this is the kind of book that even in courses on systematic theology can be used um, pretty successfully or you know, hopefully um, in a meaningful way as a supplemental text for students to see how the various um, doctrines, that the discussion of those doctrines continues in the last 150 to 200 years so that students don't have their education stop in the 17th century or even in the 18th century, but they can follow through and see how that conversation has continued even to our present day.